elastic collision example number four. But this one's got a little treat in it compared to my other examples because this elastic collision is actually perfectly elastic. So it's more than just elastic, it's perfectly elastic, and in about 90 seconds I'll show you why. Two boxes are sliding towards each other as shown above, or b sorry, below. <laughs> a spring is positioned between them so they will bounce off each other upon colliding. Before the collision, what will be the speed of the red box? So I'll set this up. First I'll describe the process I'm going to use, which is conservation of momentum. So mathematically I'm stating some of the momentum before equals some of the momentum after the collision. And then here it is. I've got two bodies before and two bodies after. That tells me it's an elastic collision because the number of bodies before the collision equals the number of bodies after the collision. So I would write this next step down as my next step in the process. Mass of the blue box times the velocity of the blue box plus mass of the red box times the velocity of the red box equals mass of the blue box times velocity of the blue box after the collision plus the mass of the red box times the velocity of the red box after the collision. Putting in my numbers, notice I got a couple negative signs here. I got the negative 19 meters per second and the negative 4 meters per second because according to my diagram above, they're all going left. Kind of like on a number line, I'm assuming things going left are going to be negative, things going right are going to be positive. So I'll suppress the unit since they all match, so I can kind of look, take a look at the math. I'll simplify by dividing everything by 2 in this case. And then I'll isolate my unknown variable, and I get my velocity of the red afterwards is negative 9 meters per second. So the negative tells me that the red box is going to the left. So in the very beginning of the collision, it's going to the left. And that makes sense, um, that in order for these two on the left to collide, it must be going to the left. Now I could have assumed that in the very beginning, but in this case I'm just letting the math tell me that. All right, so now let's talk about the perfectly elastic part. So here's the problem with the answer, the 9 meters per second. And I know it's perfectly elastic if I look at the energies. So I'm going to sum up all the kinetic energy before the collision, as shown here, and I get 441 joules. And then I'll sum up all the kinetic energy of the two bodies after the collision, and I get 441 joules. So all the energy before equals all the energy afterwards. Not all elastic collisions do that. But some do, and when they do, we call that a perfectly elastic collision. So that's what we have here. 